My name is Vanessa Tyler. I'm an assistant professor in the School of Psychology at the University of Ottawa, and I'm also a scientist at the Bruyere Research Institute in Ottawa. Okay, so I became interested in working with people with Alzheimer's disease when I started my PhD. So I was coming from a background in linguistics, and I was very interested in how the memory impairments that you see in Alzheimer's disease are affecting the language function in people with Alzheimer's disease. So I started in that area and then as I worked more with these patients I became very interested in how we can identify people that are at high risk for going on to develop dementia and how their language performance might help us do that. So my primary area of research is looking at language function in people with mild cognitive impairment and Alzheimer's disease. And I'm currently working a lot in the area of bilingualism. So I'm interested in how bilingualism affects the course of the disease, how people who are bilingual are diagnosed. So it, we use a number of language tests to diagnose Alzheimer's disease. And it turns out that bilinguals perform differently on this test at baseline. So before you see any signs of cognitive impairment. So I'm very interested in developing new tests and new methods to help diagnose people who are bilingual and determine if there's a problem with their memory. So we found that people who are bilingual are have different patterns of decline if you look at their two languages. So we test people who are French-English bilingual and we look at their performance in French and then their performance in English. For example, on a test like the picture naming task. So in this test I show you pictures and you tell me what the word is for that picture. And this is a very standard test we use to diagnose people with cognitive impairment. So a lot of the research until now has looked at bilinguals and assumed that it's best to perform this test, allowing them to respond in the language of their choice. And we actually control that. And one thing that we found that is interesting to me and potentially clinically relevant is that people who are bilingual, if you let them choose their language and switch during the test, actually perform worse than if you let them only use their dominant language. There's a subset of people that that's true for. So what we're trying to do right now is determine who those people are, how we can identify them, in order to give clinicians guidance of how they should be administering these tests. So I received funding from the Alzheimer's Society at the postdoctoral level and then as a young investigator when I first began my faculty position at University of Ottawa and then a regular research grant when the young investigator grant was, was finished. And for me, it made a huge difference to receive this funding, so it is really what allowed me to start my research career. I was able to expand my lab quite quickly and support multiple graduate students and research assistants, develop collaborations with people in other provinces, and this is something that would not have been possible for me without funding from the Alzheimer's Society. So now I have developed a research stream in bilingualism that's funded by the Alzheimer's Society and this has allowed me to do a huge amount of data collection and test development that I absolutely would not have been able to do without this funding. And I have a collaboration, a co-investigator in Quebec City, so we're actually able to go and collect data on monolingual francophones, which is a population that is not available in Ottawa. So it's allowed cross-provincial collaborations towards developing a test that will be designed for diagnosis of language declines suggestive of Alzheimer's disease, specifically in Anglophone and Francophone and bilingual Canadians. This is something that doesn't exist. It's a large gap for clinicians, so it becomes a problem when clinicians are presented with these, these p uh, clients and we are hoping that we'll be able to fill this gap. I think it's very important for people to understand what a critical role the Alzheimer Society plays in promoting and supporting Alzheimer research in Canada. and how critical this is in within the Canadian context.